Welcome to another episode of Making It Fun, everybody. I am your host, Rob Appel from Michael Miller Fabrics, and I am super excited you are here. Whoa, so excited I almost lost my breath. We're gonna have a beautiful show today. I'm super excited and I'm so jacked up. I'm going so fast because I'm actually preparing for my vacation, which I might be on while you're watching this video, which will be kind of fun. So I do have some fantastic things today like we normally do at Making It Fun. We're gonna do our show and tell, of course. Uh, we have our prize to give away at the end of the show. We've got a beautiful fat quarter bundle I can't wait to send on to somebody. The only thing we're gonna have to do at the end of this show is we're gonna have to go to a remote location to visit with our remote reporter, Mike, to find out who the prize winner was from the last video because that last video hasn't actually even happened while I'm recording this one. Sorry, I know I'm probably already confusing you and half of you have already probably already left the show. Come on back, come on back, we'll make it fun. <laughs> That's what my job, or at least my t-shirt says. So, bouncing around, if you have never seen the show before, I am recording in my home studio. I am super blessed to be on YouTube. I do work for Michael Miller Fabrics, and our whole goal with this channel is to really help support those local quilt shops out there, to remind all of our fantastic quilting friends how important it is to not only purchase fabric, but to get a hug with it when you do. So when you're in those local quilt shops, remember to let those shops know how much you appreciate them, as well as just interact with them, communicate with them, let them know what you're hunting for, what you're looking for, what kind of things you like to create and all of that kind of stuff. Because we at Michael Miller Fabrics consider ourselves to be a bit unique and we like that and we're always looking for what do you wanna do next with fabric and we're gonna try to play with those ideas. So today's lesson for the video, we are gonna play with some of the very basic concepts behind raw edge applique, also known as fusible applique, iron-on applique. I am going to use this wonderful quilt that was made, well, the quilt was made by Heidi Pridemore of Whimsical Workshop, but it was a pattern to show off this wonderful new fabric line from Gertie that is called Boudoir, and that will also be our show and tell here in a second. But you see these wonderful shoes right there? Those shoes are done as a raw edge applique technique, and the benefit of raw edge applique, and this is what, whoops, tearing apart the set, what got me into quilting originally is the fact that I can design anything like an image, like a photograph, like a picture, and then I can break it up if you think about it like a coloring book. I'm just gonna make basic outlines around everything that I do, and those shapes, or those basic outlines that I should say become the shapes, with those shapes, I then create the fun basics of whatever scene I'm gonna do. So today we're gonna do sunglasses because I think I'm so cool, I need to have shades, right? I might even put them on indoors, um, but it's really fun. So I know I'm bouncing all around and this is the fun of it. Let's go back to the order of the show, which is starting with show and tell, like I said. I'm coordinating all of this together today to support a fantastic designer at Michael Miller Fabrics. Her name is Gertie. If you haven't seen Gertie, here's a fantastic photo of Gertie. Awesome, and you can see I think she is pretty hip, and her personal style is very much reflected in this fantastic um, fabric collection called Boudoir. So it's got fun glasses and fans and shoes and spider webs and perfume bottles and all of that. So let me show you. It's got about, oh gosh, I think about 17 pieces in the collection, two colorways, but both colorways work so well together that you're gonna really be able to use them all in single projects. So let's just kind of go through these beautiful prints starting with the border print. So here you can see it on the black ground here. It's got a wonderful kind of lace running border and it goes in for the roses and the feathers up through the top. Nice coordinates, very good with the small imagery. Again, here's our lipsticks and our chains and our hairbrushes and the shoes coming in, the masks, the lipstick, oh, super fun. Um, I get so excited. You've got the bows, another fun coordinate there. Same as the pink, but in black and white. And I love this little variegated bead stripe. It's one of my favorite prints of the whole season that we did and it happened to be part of this fantastic boudoir collection from Gertie. But I just love the character in those little beads. I hope you can see them okay on camera there. I've got another color that shows them also. So like I said, that's uh, kind of the white colorway. And then here as we look on, you can see that border print again. Now on the red with the wonderful lace here. Here with that beaded stripe that I just love so much. I mean, I mean of course, it's probably doing this on camera, but it's really a neat look. Uh, the rest of the coordinates, then again, they just translate beautifully on both the white and the black. 
super fun line, super hip line. I love this style of look, even though I don't know what it's called. Gertie, you should shoot me for that kind of stuff. You should almost not let me borrow your quilts and fabric for not knowing enough about the style. But fortunately, I didn't design today's pattern and the gal who did knew all about it and that was Heidi Pridemore. She did a fantastic job. Now, uh, oh, fun. Heidi Pridemore was one of the young ladies that we did interview um, from the Windsor Cool Workshop when I was in Kansas City. When I was doing all those interview videos, she was one of the interviews that I put up and it was really fun to talk to her and talk about her process. So that's another fun video you can watch here when you're done with today's video. Let me set these aside for now. We're not going to cut into the samples. I might need them later on. And as a matter of fact, I'm not gonna cut into the fat quarter bundle either. One of you is gonna want this for your entire project. So I'm just gonna set this aside until we get into the mystery box of questions. And we're gonna make some of those fun sunglasses here uh, using some of my other fabrics. Um, and just to play with it a little bit. Let's show you that quilt. Let's talk a little bit more about Heidi. Let's talk about Whimsical Workshop because one of the things I love to do here is promote other designers and patterns. So I am not giving the pattern away today on the show because I want to support Heidi. Now she has two versions of this particular project. This one here, the shoes and shades, it is so big. It is like 69 by 88 inches. I can't even really hold it up on the set and I certainly couldn't pin it up on the set anywhere. It was just too dang big. Oh, it's so big. But it's also amazing, isn't it? So the fun part about this, let's just kind of break it down. And I do have this really cool project sheet here from Heidi, excuse me, uh, from Gertie that shows Heidi's quilt in here, the shoes and shades. This might be an easier way to see it, but nonetheless, there's basically strips of fabric that have been easily patchwork sewn together. You can see the red strip and the white strip and the black strip. That's that cool border print, right? And we're gonna hold it like this, probably choking the microphone. That's that border strip. Super, super cool use of that, right? So then this glasses part right here, this glasses is all the raw edge or fusible raw edge applique that we're gonna create here in a second. And Heidi, as I said, has this monster version of the quilt, but she also has a really fun little small project uh, version that you can do if you don't need this large of a quilt. Now I'm sure we're gonna need it, for example, so we'll come back to it here in a second. I won't throw this one off too far either, and I will fold it nicely so we can come and talk about the glasses. If you want this pattern for either the big quilt or the small version, please just visit Heidi's website, thewhimsicalworkshop.com. You can pick up the patterns there, or I'm sure in all of those fantastic local quilt shops that we want you to visit anyways. Now, on to today's lesson, because like I said, I got a vacation to get to. Let's wrap this video up pretty quick today, huh? What do you think? Maybe I can do it in under six and a half hours. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Here's our awesome shades. And in the quilt, she used kind of that fun micro print from Gertie to kind of do the outline of the sunglasses and then just the jet black here and the lens of the glass. Now, if you're brand new to quilting, I keep throwing around this word applique. Applique, what does that mean? Well, I'm going to apply the sunglasses on top of that white strip. That strip is just fabric. So let's break it down into our simplest of ingredients today. I'm gonna to use a couple of solids like my cotton couture. I'm just gonna use our beautiful uh, orange. I'm going to use for the glass part, the shades, the lens of the, of the glasses, I'm gonna use the marble. It's got a little bit of a texture to it uh, in the purple because I want my whole sunglasses to have a fun and purple feel because what I thought would be clever, and I'm not trying to always just do it different, but I wanna always encourage you how to think and be creative. When you look at the glasses, you can see that the frames of the glasses and then the sides, you know, the, the arm part of the glass. Oh, I can't see anything. The arm part right there, the glass, oh, much better, thank you. Of the glasses um, are folded behind the glasses. And the way this applique is done, they're done as individual pieces from within the pattern. So the pattern I have here included the layout, the lenses, the glass itself. Now this part here is labeled waste. I'm not going to cut that out. It would be too hard to possibly put this back together. So I'm just going to lay the lens on top of this. But because of that, I am always using 
my very favorite, which is the Heat & Bond Featherlight. The Featherlight from Heat & Bond is such a nice, light, fusible web that I can actually machine quilt through several layers of it with no problem whatsoever. And in today's video, I'm even going to talk a bunch about blanket stitching, and I have, if you've noticed, a different machine on the set today, because I need this machine for blanket stitching, where my other machine is a straight stitch only. So I'm going to show you some of the, the edge finishing as well, which is something that I don't normally do, meaning blanket stitching. I like free motion quilting for it. Okay, here we go. So what I did is I took, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I was telling you what I want to do design-wise. I want these little frame pieces, I want them to be a little bit different shade, as if they were the inside of the frame and the outside of the frame. So for me, I'm going to make the bright front outside using my hash dot that's a little bit more of the bright, uh, the purple family, and then I'm going to use this more lavender shade. I'm going to use that as the insides and the sides of the ear pieces that are on the glasses that you see here, 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 and here. And I've gone ahead and traced all of that out already on the fusible web. A light table. If you're gonna do a lot with Fusible Web, is a wonderful tool. It's a great resource. It makes it so you can trace so nicely. I have a big, beautiful one from Daylight that I just absolutely love, and it works perfectly. You can also put it up against a window. For this, it was a small enough piece. I was actually able to trace it just by putting the dark black fabric behind, and then I could lay this down here and I could actually trace through. But if I had a lot of tracing to do, I make sure I use a light table just to prevent fatigue on those eyes. I wouldn't wanna have to start wearing glasses. Ha, ha Okay, moving on. So, back to what we're at here again. I need to get my fabrics prepped out, and one of the things we want to do is I've drawn my pieces close together for ease of use through the process, but now these are different colors of fabric. So I'm going to cut out my lenses, and if you haven't seen this tool before, this is the Shark Apple Cutter. I invented this. It's a 14 millimeter rotary cutter for doing exactly what you see me doing right now, which is freestyle cutting. When I cut my shapes after, after, after they are on the fabric, that's when I want to cut right on the lines. So I'm cutting nice and wide right now to prevent cutting right on the lines so that I can come back later on and cut right onto the lines. I have my iron heating up. I talked too long that it cooled back down. So now I'm just going to take a moment and plan through these pieces with us all together. I said I wanted the light, the lighter purple hash dot to be the front of the frame. I'm just creating a bit more perspective with my color choices, that's all. The fusible web will be ironed to the wrong side or the back side of your fabric. And if there is a crease, because it's just come off of the bolt at that local quilt shop, just take a moment and get the creases down. It is not necessary to preheat the fabric with the Heat & Bond Feather Light. I was not preheating the fabric, I was getting the crease out of the way. As a matter of fact, because it is such a lightweight fuse, we don't want to overdo it. And I don't want to waste much. I'm not going to stick it out in the middle either. So I'm just going to put it right along this edge, making sure that the fusible web will not get on my ironing surface at all. I am touching the iron to the paper side only. I never put the iron on the glue or the shiny side. And because it is the heat and bond feather light, it just takes about two seconds with a dry iron to bond. And then I'm going to take that piece. I'm going to set it aside really quickly. And as I trim off, I'm making sure that I trim all of my fusible web and my fabric away because I do not store fused fabrics in the same stash that I store my other fabrics in. I don't ever want there to be an accident where I don't realize there's fusing on there and I maybe take it to the ironing board and make a mess or something like that with it. Just trying to be cautious. I'm gonna prep out the rest of the framework pieces. Okay, we're getting onto the lenses. And this is the other fun for me in the actual making of the fusible raw edge quilts is the benefit is I can choose the different fabrics. I can have so much fun creatively in my fabric choices and my layout choices and all of that, that I really do just absolutely love this style of quilt making. Bonding the lenses. So I have all three of my fabric choices already set up and made. While that's cooling, let's go ahead and prepare to cut out we're going to need to cut out all the shapes, so I'm just going to get the crack in here. Now, when you're using the Shark Rotary Cutter, of course, I'm showing you on the biggest shape first because it's going to be easiest for me. And you'll notice I'm actually using it by holding it like a pen or pencil up in my first finger. And I'm also using my left hand to help a bit with the navigation. So I'm using that left hand here to turn the fabric 
as I go. And you should stay basically just on or outside of the line. New to fusible applique. One of the things that does happen with some of these, and I was actually alluding to it earlier about how to put the lenses in. In my opinion, you are not wise to cut away holes to fill them back in. You're better to layer and layer and layer because if you cut a hole away and you didn't cut it perfectly, <laughs> this is gonna be cool, and you didn't cut it perfectly, then you might have a little gap of background fabric showing through, and we don't want that to happen. And yes, the shark cutter does make it incredibly easy for cutting the applique pieces. And these should be sold, the shark cutters, I should say, in your local quilt shops as well. If you can't find it at home, you can find it on my website, robappel.com. But again, I'm happy to sell them to the local quilt shop so that you can buy them from your local quilt shop. I just want you to make sure you have the fun tool if you're into applique. Now, back to what we were talking about a moment ago before we even cut out the rest of the frame. What I was talking about with these lenses is I want to be able to drop the lens in here and make it basically fit what I'm gonna call as perfectly. If I had cut out a hole in the framework, I would have to make it fit perfectly. Or the other trick, cut the hole a bit smaller than you think you need to, and then you would put the lens behind the frame so that it covers it up. What I'm trying to avoid is any sort of gap. Like if my shirt was the fabric behind, you don't want that gap in between to let a background fabric show through. It will affect the design in a negative way. These pieces are made. We've got a few more little short pieces of the frame and we are almost done with the setup. And you know what? As much as I like my little cutter here, sorry, let's take a moment and show you one more trick because I just feel like being as good a teacher as I could have. The best of teacher, the best teacher, I, something like that. So, scissors. This is how most people do applique. This is the way we've always done applique. A small, short blade, flat scissor is great this way. What I wanna talk about is the use of the scissor though while we have this moment together. This is a very important moment. I hope you'll please sit down and watch closely here. I'm kidding, I'm just trying to be fun. The best way to use your scissor for applique is I want to open my scissor blade all the way up and as I cut into the fabric, I close the scissor to the tip. I readjust the scissor and now as I make a corner, I can actually come down and as I come into that corner, I can roll nicely through and then I reopen, come around that corner because it was there, come around that corner. What I'm trying to say is with your scissor, if you can do a slow closing method while you move or manipulate the fabric through the scissor blade, it's basically what I'm doing with the cutter here, which gives you a very nice clean edge. I would like you to resist the, the urge to nibble along because when you nibble along, it's gonna fray or shred at that edge a little bit and we are not folding this edge under. It's a raw edge. It's, a, it's, an, it's gonna be stitched. So we want it to look sharp when it's done. And when I can't find my scissors in five minutes, they're under the table. I just put them there and I won't remember that. Okay, back to the work we have because I've got my background and I chose a wonderful fabric that will look terrible with the purple or perfect with the purple, depending on how much you like complementary colors. And that would be orange. <laughs> I'm going to just get the creases out of this a little bit. We're just gonna make a fun and simple little sample here. We're not doing anything that will have to be uh, earth shattering. Now, let's talk about our project though. We have the paper still on the back. It's good to leave your paper on the back until you know your design is complete. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna kind of find a corner and you're gonna kind of fight with it a little bit possibly. And a lot of us do this. We kind of wiggle and roll at the corners. And so as I get a hold of this and I start to peel back, I'm looking and I can see that there's actually a shine now on the fabric. The paper has a little bit of sheen still too, but I can see that the glue is completely bonded nicely onto my glasses there, or the frame I should say. And I'm just gonna set them where I want within my quilt or my quilt block or whatever part I'm doing on here. Now I'm gonna individually take the lenses and let's say I couldn't get that paper to come off. This is a fun trick that we've been doing for years. Take a straight pin, you probably can't see that. I can drop it to see if we can hear the pin drop, but you wouldn't know. I'm gonna use this here. 
and I'm just scoring it straight line like that. And that basically gave me like, you know, the fun old fashioned stickers, like a little straight line I could crack or crease. And that's really nice when you have rounded edges because it is very difficult at times to get in to those sharp little edges. I'm placing the glass into the frame so that it looks right. And I'm just kind of eyeballing the distance of the frame around the edge of the glass. Now these pieces here that will fit in, you may find that poking at the little edge is the trick I was just doing there. And then these are going to fall in. And I can show you like this maybe a little bit better. Like this. And now you can see the shadowing, or at least I'm hoping you can see the shadowing effect I was trying to create by using a slightly different shade. Now Heidi used the same fabrics in her project, and of course that's really cool. And so I just wanted to see what would happen if we did it a little bit different here. And so now we've got that nice little fold over crease of the frameworks. Make sure you're tucking all of your edges in underneath. And I was just using that straight pin that was in my hand, but I also love a stiletto for this style of work. And often you can use your stiletto to get the paper off of the back of your fused fabric too. These little parts are gonna be the little pieces, the tips that hang out from the side. So again, I'm gonna sneak those underneath. And the best thing we can do is just make sure it's nice and symmetrical, of course. All right, so I'm taking a look at it. I've got the papers peeled off. I make sure everything is just the way I want it. And now when I come in with my iron, I'm gonna basically do a straight down press. One, two, three, and lift. If I see any spots that are off the corner, I'm gonna hit that corner that looked like it was standing up, this corner that looked like it was standing up. And I'm going to remind you, do not over iron. If you over iron this, the glue is such a fine glue, it'll start to break down and then the pieces won't stick. If you have a piece that doesn't stick in the, in the long run, use a little bit of an Aileen's basting glue or the lapel stick or some sort of little sewable glue just to tack it down for a moment before you get to the machine. And when you get to the machine, you're gonna do whatever finishing you want to hold your applique down. Now I mentioned earlier that I generally use the free motion machine stitching process. So I build the whole quilt top at this point with all my appliques. Then I put my backing and my batting together and I start the machine quilting process by sewing on the raw edges of the applique. But in Heidi's quilt, let's see if I can show you right here on this red glass. This is really neat. Right along here, we have what is called a blanket stitch. So it's running along here and it's biting back into the uppermost layer of the applique. And basically it's just finishing off of the edge and it is fairly washable, not 100% washable because you still could have threads that come loose underneath here. If you want it to be completely washable, you would do a zigzag or a satin stitch. But a lot of folks don't talk about the blanket stitch much, so let's talk about that here today. Maybe it's a good piece of information that will help all of you. So as I come over to the sewing machine, what I'm looking for at this moment is an easy place for me to start and teach everybody. The stitch is gonna be something that I can kind of calculate as I go. And the first thing I'm looking at is the center of my foot is where the needle is gonna drop for the straight line and then it's gonna bite in deeper. So there's a little line marker right here on my foot that I'm watching so closely. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and set a stitch. And I'm just gonna start to count my rhythm. So it was a down over back. So down over back, down over back, down over back. And I just count this through. And the reason that's important is I'm gonna to wanna to know when to pivot. I'm going to stitch that frame before I come back to the sides or the, the like, what do you call those? The ear pieces of the glasses? Down, over, back, down, over, back. So watch as I come down in here where that framework is. I'm not gonna deal with those darker colored pieces at the moment, but I'm just sewing through everything. 
down over back. And the reason that's gonna be crucial is at this point, I am here, I have the needle down. I actually want to pivot my fabric because I came down into the nose of the glass and I wanted to be able to take one stitch without coming down. Now I've pinched right into the nose and now the next stitch over back and I'm progressing. So that's how we handle our corners with the blanket stitch. We want to be able to count it out and different machines have different kinds of blanket stitches and this is my favorite style of blanket stitch. And the reason it's my favorite style of blanket stitch is it only goes down over and back, one stitch down, over and back. I've met blanket stitches that will go a couple stitches over or a couple stitches down. It becomes harder to get your rhythm and harder to get your count while you're doing it. So a single down, over, back series blanket stitch is beautiful uh, if you're looking at applique. Let's go ahead and finish these glasses out. Okay, here we're coming to another corner. So let's talk about this again and back. Oop, needle down mode. So I'm at my pivot point. I know the next stitch is going to bite into the frame and back. And this is a bigger corner, so I'm gonna manipulate it. And this is that sharp edge there that gives these glasses so much character. And then continuing on. Best to do one series or one layer of fabric at a time. Probably should have started with the actual lenses themselves because it was in the middle of the applique. And I will also point out that it is often appropriate to use a little bit of an interfacing or a stabilizer, I should say, underneath this orange background fabric that I would have just torn away later. Take your time, you don't need to go fast. I'm the only one that's in a hurry here. Remember, I'm the one going on vacation and trying to get my videos done. And this happens to be a 2.5 by 2.5, which means that my length of my stitch are both two and a half millimeters. So if you were doing really small work, you could shorten the bite and the length or just the bite And as we come into the last corner again, I'm just focusing on the way that the machine rotates through the corners so that my stitches look nice and even and calculated. And then I'm gonna stop right there. Because I've made it all the way around and you can see how cool those glasses would look, right? Let's drop them in for your overhead view so we can talk about this a little bit more. Here you see the blanket stitching over so nicely going around. This is what I was calling down, over, back, down, over, back. So you're counting out the stitches. Of course, because it is applique, I still need to come back and do the stitching around the outside of the glasses here and the outside of the frames. But you can see by adding, especially I added the black thread, how much character that brings back into our applique. And again, it is secured the fabrics completely and permanently, not necessarily 100% washable because you could have a little bit of fabric fraying here. And again, if washability was a concern, you would either satin stitch or shorten down the length in your blanket stitch. I was using a 2.5, so maybe you wanna to go to a 2.0, something like that to make sense, make it all the easier, and of course, make it fun for yourself. And I almost forgot to finish the video because I was getting so zenned out over here at the machine, just counting those stitches, and isn't that why we sew, right? We all love this because it is so therapeutic, it is fun, and it is healing, and I know the benefits of working with my hands because my brain often goes so fast that by getting focused and getting zoned into something that I enjoy. Boy, it helps that process up there. So I guess I better wrap up the show because I think I've taught you everything we want to know. Let's go over a quick review real quick. Raw edge applique is only one way to get layers and layers of fabric on top of each other. Uh, the quilt police don't love it, by the way, because it is raw and not necessarily washable, but I love it because it's so easy to do and you can create any design this way. 
Heat and Bond Feather Light is my favorite because I've used it for a million years, but the reason I use it is it is a nice lightweight and I can do many, many layers and easily needle or free motion machine quilt through. Of course, the pattern I was using today was from the Whimsical Workshop, Heidi Pridemore. She has two different sizes available where you get not only these wonderful glasses, but you also get these radical high heel shoes as well. And I apologize, I can't hold the quilt up giant. It's just so beautiful and big, it doesn't fit in this space very well. Ooh, maybe I should keep it for my bed. That wouldn't be a bad thing at all, and I bet you my wife would love it as well. But enough comedy and jokes. Like I said, we have prizes we need to give away. We love giving away prizes. Prizes are exciting, and the rules to the prizes, if you are not aware, is that we like to send your prize to your local quilt shop so that you can go in and visit with them and pick it up. Remember, I want to support the local quilt shops. So all you have to do to win a prize here at Making It Fun is pay attention to the rules, and here they are. One, be subscribed to Making It Fun with Rob Appel. Two, you're going to put your answer to today's mystery question at the bottom of today's video. In this actual video, in the comments below, I'm gonna ask you a mystery question in here in just a moment, and then I'm just gonna ask you to answer that mystery question down below. I will go ahead and draw a prize two days after the video posts. So that gives you a little bit of time, but you gotta be aggressive, you gotta get in there, and please be creative with your answers. I read all of these and get a big kick out of it. Oh, and that's right, because we have a live slash recorded feed from last week's prize winner who I don't actually know it is when I'm recording this. Let's go live right now to our rogue reporter, Mike, out in the field. Mike, what do you have? Oh, wait, Mike. You're breaking up a little bit. Oh, really? Well, that's fantastic. Oh. Uh, Mike, you're getting a little long-winded. Uh, people want to want to get the prize. No, I'm, I'm still breaking up a little bit. Ah, excellent. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate it. Okay. All right. Okay, so then back to today's prize. I will happily mail one of you, my lucky winner from today's show, this beautiful fat quarter bundle of Gertie's boudoir fabric for Michael Miller. And, ooh, and I almost forgot that we have a bonus to today's prize. Orophil has given us one of the fantastic thread sets that was designed by Gertie to go with the boudoir fabric collection. So I will be sending that in the mail. It's on its way to me. So as soon as we get our prize winner drawn, I will put that beautiful thread box with this fantastic fat quarter bundle, put it in a box and mail it off to the local quilt shop of your choice. Here comes the mystery question. Randomly drawn. Looking, here we go. Question. Oh, I think I'm gonna like this question a lot. By the way, I eat just about anything other than eggplant. But here's the question. Question is, you are having a dinner party. You can invite anyone in the world. Who would you invite and why? That's right. Please answer today's mystery question in the comments below. Make sure you're subscribed to Making It Fun and you may be the wonderful winner of today's prize. Other than that, I just want to say thank you again for all of you to watching the fantastic show. I am having so much fun making these. I'm having so much fun making these fun projects. I hope I'm able to teach you all a little something about the basics of sewing. Don't worry, I've got bunches of full length tutorials I'm working on as well, but this is the way that I am making it fun every Wednesday. We'll see you real soon. Thanks again. I'm glad to see you're still there. Hey, if you insist on spending all day on YouTube, great with me. Please check out a few of my other videos. I think they're fantastic. Hit that subscribe button, hit the bell to be notified. We'll see you next time for another Helping of Fun.